Welcome back guys, we've got quite a few callers tonight, Rafil we'll be trying to get through to you and apparently we can't get through to you, I think your cell phone went dead. So I hope you're watching what I'm doing now for the viewers at home. Rafil Weir's question was on analytical geometry and it said the following. They're asking for, now if you watched, Rafil Weir, put your mind back to Monday show, I hope you watched on Monday. For those of you that did watch the Monday show, it's the same issue popping up where they give you three vertices in a quadrilateral and they ask you to find the fourth one. But they give you information. They tell you it's either a rhombus, a square, a rectangle or a parallelogram. And in Rafilwe's case, it is a parallelogram. The coordinates that they gave me was the coordinate pair A, which is negative 2 and 0. Then there's another point B, which I'm going to put up here somewhere given as a coordinate pair 2 and 1. The point C is 1 and minus 3, so yeah, let's more or less put it there. I hope I have enough space on this board. 1 and negative 3. And they say it's A, B, C, D. That is a parallelogram. A, B, C, D. Now notice, guys, they did not give me the fourth vertex. So if I join these, if I go for A, B and I go for B, C, I bring D down here somewhere. Let's place it down there. It's a coordinate pair D, X, Y. Now, hang on here. Let's bring that line down. Now, remember, the defining property for a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel and they also are equal in length. So this is just as long as that, and they are also parallel. Now, Rafil, where there's a hectically long way to do this question, and then there is a shortcut. Now, I did the shortcut with you guys on Monday, and I'm not going to do the long way. You're going to waste time in an exam if you do it the long way, guys. Please don't be silly. You need the time to spend on the geometry questions and the difficult trigonometry questions. You cannot afford to waste time. Okay, I'll talk about the long way, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, let's quickly have a look. I've got the length of BC over here. I know that with that length there, I can find this length over here. So, but that length will have two variables in it. It will have a variable x and a variable y. Now, remember, two variables need two equations. Okay, so the second thing I'm going to use is I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I know that gradient. I know this gradient is the same as that one. Now, with that gradient and this point, I find the equation of this line. And I put it into that distance formula that I just got. Now, guys, please, that is almost 24 steps. Look at what I'm saying here. They have given me something that's crucial. They gave me coordinate B. They gave me coordinate C. They gave me coordinate A. They're asking for coordinate D. Even more important than that is it's a parallelogram. That bit of information up there. I'm working with a parallelogram. So those distances are fixed, those lengths are equal. So I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say that the gradient of BC is nothing other or is exactly equal to the gradient of the line segment AD. But now please, I'm not going to work with a whole gradient. Now I'm going to split I want to find X and I want to find Y. So I'm going to say that means that the change, remember that triangle means the change in. The Y values between B and C is the same as the change in the Y values for A and D. And now it's just monkey see, monkey do. B and C, 1 minus minus 3 is 1 plus 3. 
therefore has to equal. Now guys, remember, if you work with B towards C, from B to C, then you've got to work from A to B. Keep your direction the same. Don't go B, C and D, A. Then you've changed the direction. That is what's important here. So naught minus Y is equal to 1 plus 3. I can see if I throw the negative over, that gives me 4. I kick it over and quickly, in literally two steps, I've got an answer which would have taken me 15 steps otherwise. Okay, so I have, and I'm going to put it down here, I've got the coordinate for D, I've got the Y coordinate, it is negative 4. Now I need to find the X coordinate and I do it exactly the same way. The change in X of B, C is the same as the change in X of A, D. Lerato, uh, sorry, Rafilwe, make a note of this. Please, if you're watching me, write this down. It is important and it's going to save you time. Don't do any other thing. If the three vertices are given, you want the fourth one, this is what you do. Okay, let's quickly plug in here. We get 2 minus 1, which is equal to, watch out here, negative 2, negative x. Okay, and it's pretty easy maths from there. I'm just going to kick the x over. If I do 2 minus 1, I think for 300 years, that's also, or 3 billion years, that's been 1. Kick it over the equal sign becomes minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. So I've got the two of them, and I could have done that in my head. I'm just writing it out for you guys quite nicely, as you can remember the method that I applied. Now the second part of the question... 